This is Twit. I Am Special is asking, I understand right to left sound, but what about front to back? How is that reproduced? Right. So again, going back to just as as our brains are being trained as we grow up and hear sounds, uh, yeah, you would think that there's no way to tell whether a sound is in front of you, you know, dead center in front of you, like 10 feet out or five feet in front of you or in between your ears, um, because the sound would be arriving at both ears equally. But there is enough of a difference um, that uh, your brain can distinguish uh, whether where that sound is front to back as well as left and right. Now, I will tell you that front to back localization is the most difficult thing to reproduce. Um, uh, left and right and anything off angle isn't too bad, but... But right. It has and the reason, and really the reason I should I should make sure everybody understands the reason is that there's a difference in the time of arrival that the sound if, if if a sound is off on an angle to your right, the sound will reach your right ear before it reaches your left ear, and that's very tiny time difference. But the brain is exquisitely attuned to it. Similarly, there'll be a level difference. The right ear it'll be a little louder than it will be in the left ear. So those two things right there make it relatively easy. But as you say, if you're straight on the money, that's pretty hard. It's it's really hard. In fact, uh, even with our software, when you listen to, we have a speaker test where it just plays a, a woman's voice from each of the speakers. Uh, the front center one um, is the one that's toughest for most people to hear. Uh, so... I know I've had people who have tested out our software, and when they do hear front and center out in front of them, then they know that uh, they're like, "Wow, okay, this this is this really works." Mm. And you know, it, I'm not saying that that's going to work the same for everybody because of the differing HRTFs, um, but uh, yeah, for for a good percentage of the population, they're able to hear in our software that front and center channel. And in fact, we have that little clip that I would like to play people now, um, which is called, I forget what you called it, um, channel, channel check or channel ID or something channel like ID, that. something like that. Um, now, to, to be clear, you and I, Darren, <laughs> will yeah. not hear this because Skype audio is mono. But right. anybody else listening live to the podcast or after the fact, if you're listening on headphones, you should be able to hear the effect because it has been encoded with the out of your head software into this binaural signal. Right. So, so this, uh, this recording is just an out, a recording of the output of out of your head software. We created this 7.1 test file. And so what you'll hear, as long as you're wearing headphones, is uh, the output from out of your head. All right, let's check it out. This is the out of your head channel identification test. This is the left speaker. This is the center speaker. This is the right speaker. This is the right surround speaker. This is the right rear surround speaker. This is the left rear surround speaker. This is the left surround speaker. The next sound you will hear is the LFE speaker. Leave now while you still can. <laughs> <laughs> I love that at the end. <laughs> and what I really like about that particular video clip is that it shows you which speaker the sound is coming from. Um, yeah. Which uh, oh. gives you a visual cue, which probably enhances the sense of, the, you know, the sound is coming from this speaker or that speaker. Yeah. I mean, I created those uh, visualizations for that reason, of course. Um, to see the amplitude and the frequency of the sound coming from those speakers. What I, I can tell you is that for most people, it is, it's a, the visual cues 
uh, can really help with hearing the sound where it's supposed to be. So I encourage people to put sit in a room the first time they listen to out of your head, sit in a room with some actual speakers. They don't even have to be hooked up. It's just your brain sees speakers and thinks, oh, the sound <laughs> the sound could be coming from those. I even tell people just put cardboard boxes out in the room <laughs> and, and your brain will believe that, well, the sound is coming from over there, so it must be coming from that cardboard box. Mm-hmm. Other times I'll have people, you know, sitting in their cubicle or at their desk and they'll listen to it, but then have difficulty because the sound is coming from the other side of the wall in front of them. And then their brain says, well, that can't be happening. So therefore the sound can't be over there. And your brain sometimes collapses the image because there's no, it it doesn't believe that the sound could be coming from the other side of the wall. 